Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today I am joined by Stacey Harmon. It's good to be back with you, Stacey. It's great to be back talking about my favorite app. Definitely. And uh, it's obviously um, not a, a hidden part of the conversation, but we're um, obviously I've talked a lot about Evernote in the past and I guess I'm doing some, I'm filling some wrongs or what's the saying? Like I'm sort of covering my base or something like that. I, I can't remember the saying, but basically I'm just, I'm trying to do good now. I'm trying to uh, cover all the tools in the right manner. So um, you, you get the first spot of talking about Evernote, which is quite exciting, I think. Well, thank you. I'm honored. And I love that you're open to it being a great tool for a group of people. Definitely. And um, we, we, we've obviously um, been talking and, and um, Stacey has kindly put together 10 Evernote recommendations um, for you guys so that you guys can go away and apply them to your own Evernote accounts or whether you're interested. Um, so take it away, Stacey. Sure. So let's see. I'm going to go through a list of things that I really think you should know about Evernote to make it work the best it possibly can for you. So the first is, if you're going to get the most out of Evernote, you want to use the full desktop app to organize uh, your data. Uh, and you want to use mobile to capture and find. You're really going to be frustrated if you're trying to organize Evernote from your mobile device or from the web. Uh, you want to use the power of the full free desktop app, which they have for both Mac and Evernote client, uh, sorry, Mac and Windows clients, you just go to evernote.com forward slash download, and you'll have access to all the power of the tool. So the second hack is that you should understand that every single Evernote account comes with a default notebook. It's where you create notes if they if you don't override that at the time of note creation. So notes have to live in a notebook, and that's your default notebook. And if you have a new Evernote account, typically Evernote calls that inbox. But if you have an older account, it might be named your a user account or something uh, like first notebook, depending on how old your notebook is. So understanding that you have this default notebook, and that's where notes are going to be created, uh, unless you uh, tell it to create the notes somewhere else uh, is a really helpful concept to understand, which leads to the next tip, uh, which is really rooted in David Allen's ideas around GTD, which is you want to centralize as much stuff as you can in that default notebook. Uh, and I call it my inbox. I actually rename it to dot inbox. That's a naming convention hack uh, to have it clear that it's a collection point. Uh, and I use that as a processing station, not a holding tank. So people get in trouble with Evernote, it gets out of control when they just start collecting endlessly information in their inbox uh, and they don't process it. Uh, so having a mentality that you want to process that information can really help your overall Evernote usage. And uh, even if you need to move that data into a notebook that's like holding tank or to process or to file, uh, that can really help your usage of Evernote. So the next tip that I would suggest is that you organize with notebooks, not tags. Now, I know this can be controversial and everybody has an opinion about it, but my theory is that you should start at the base by organizing with notebooks and stacks, uh, particularly if you're going to be sharing data or want to share data with other users. Uh, in the current form of Evernote, now we do have some insight that this may be changing. Uh, so my recommendation may evolve over time, but in the current way Evernote works, uh, tags don't render or function the same way across all devices. And because we use Evernote from multiple devices, you wanna have consistency across those devices. And the way you're gonna have that is with notebooks uh, and stacks. And then in addition, if you do wanna really maximize the powerful sharing features of Evernote, you can share a notebook, but you can't share a group of notes based on a tag. So you open up a lot more options for yourself when you organize with notebooks. Now, I'm not anti-tags. You can certainly use tags uh, very effectively to uh, as a search feature, which is how I advise you use them, but I think they're a layer on top of the notebooks and stacks organization. Uh, the next tip is, 
I uh, actually work to prepare my notes for what I call search success. So what I'm saying here is I advise using naming conventions to really uh, prepare your notes to have a successful search. One of the reasons I advise that you don't have to use tags in Evernote is because Evernote's search is so powerful that in essence, the entire note is a tag. <laughs> so if the keyword that you're looking for appears anywhere in your note. If you look uh, for, if you go through search, your note is going to be found. So instead of taking the time to tag the note, why not just make sure you name the note in a way that will facilitate uh, rapid search uh, in the future, which leads to my next tip, which is uh, if you spruce up your search skills, you're really going to uh, have a great experience with Evernote. And there's a lot of advanced search parameters that make Evernote really, really powerful. And one of those is an in-title search. So if you do a search and you precede your search with the words in-title colon, no spaces, all lowercase, and then you put in your word or phrase after that, it will restrict the search just to the title of the note. And uh, if you've prepped your notes for search success by titling your note purposely, uh, that can be a really useful tip. It's one I rely on a lot in my account. And one of the ways that I maintain the ability to find whatever I'm looking for uh, within an account that has over 30,000 notes in it. Um, the next hack that I have is getting familiar with note links. Uh, when I discovered note links, like my understanding of what I could even accomplish with Evernote was like, my mind was blown. It was like, wow, I just had this entire new option of organization open up to me. And what a note link will do is allow you to hyperlink between any two notes in your system. Uh, and it's a really powerful tool that you can use to create structure and ease of navigation uh, between different parts of your system. Uh, and one of the reasons that I advocate working on your desktop, your full desktop app, which I talked about earlier in my tips, uh, is because you can use key commands to create these note links and quickly paste them in notes and create this organization between like-minded data, uh, between uh, projects, for example, or tasks, uh, both things which I do within Evernote. The next tip is, uh, create notes from outside of Evernote. So it's certainly easy to create notes inside of Evernote, but Evernote has three really powerful ways to create notes from outside of Evernote. Uh, I call it kind of like the, the big three. <laughs> uh, you have the Evernote Web Clipper, which uh, allows you to capture and create a note from any web-based data that you find uh, and save that directly into Evernote without ever opening Evernote. It also retains the originating hyperlink back to the source. And Evernote has some hidden features uh, that interact with particular sites uh, on the Web Clipper. If you try web clipping, say, on Amazon or YouTube, you're going to find that there's some nifty formatting that Evernote has because of official integrations with those kinds of uh, locations. And uh, that data is all kept really neat and pretty inside of Evernote. Um, that's one. The other is on premium accounts, you can create Evernote notes by forwarding emails into Evernote. It's one of the key ways that I keep inbox zero on my email account. And that's by forwarding actionable items and reference materials that live in emails into Evernote and marrying them to other project materials that are not email related. So really powerful way to go. And then the third is from your mobile device using, if you're on iOS, uh, Evernote's scannable app. This is a separate app from Evernote that Evernote owns and develops, and it integrates beautifully, as you'd expect, with Evernote. Uh, I use it to digitize all of my receipts and pretty much any paper that comes into my life from uh, when I'm not at my desk. So, and that happens a lot. Uh, I'm getting receipts. I'm self-employed. I want to track my expenses and make sure that I'm retaining and centralizing all of that in one spot. Scannable is a huge help for that. And for those of you that aren't on iOS, the Evernote camera uh, within the Evernote app is a brilliant tool uh, to digitize as well. Uh, they both work really, really great. 
And then let's see, I have also key commands. So uh, I think power users are really putting the power of key commands to use within Evernote. They, uh, for a couple that I use all the time, are jump to notebook. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so they do vary between the Mac and the Windows platforms, but uh, I'm navigating around different notebooks uh, using the jump command. And then I'm also moving whether sync like one at a time or in mass notes from my inbox to other locations in my system. So I'm processing and filing without ever taking my hands off the keyboard. And that's a really uh, efficient way to use and get the most out of Evernote. Wow. There were plenty there uh, to go away and implement in your account and, and 30,000 notes plus that's uh definitely stumps mine. <laughs> I, I think I only have 10,000, but that's really, really good. Um, and, and a point there, actually, um, the note links, I don't actually use that technique. So that's something I'm going to go away with because um, I remember Enrico Nala, who did quite a lot of sort of yes. features about Evernote, uh -huh. um, he he uses those and, and swears by them. So I will definitely well, I take a look at them. You use you use Evernote a lot as a as a reference re library. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So one of the great ways you could do that would be to just create a table of contents note in one of your reference notebooks. Yeah. To which basically is note links, right? Uh, oh, and yeah, use good. and I use I, this is a, maybe an eleventh bonus feature. I use the <laughs> reminder, the non dated reminder, to kind of pin that note to the top of my notebook. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that I have easy access to it, particularly from my mobile device. I, I use that technique a lot. Yeah, I like the, I, I do the pinning thing really well, but the table of contents I, I definitely need to do because um, that would be useful for some of my business, um, my sort of new business documents that I store in there. So that that's a, yeah, a really good takeaway. So thank you. And um, that was a great list, Stacey. Um, where can everyone find you after this episode? You can go to harmanenterprises.com for all the uh, free videos, blog posts, and paid products that I offer around Evernote. Fantastic. And um, if you want to learn more about Stacy's workflow and setup, you can also tune in to the Tools They Use podcast. Um, and if it's uh, available, I'll include it in the link in the description. But it should be out on the 23rd of September at about 5 p.m. BST. So thanks, Stacey. Um, and, and it's been really lovely talking to you. I enjoyed it as always. Thanks for having me.